For me, starting to feel good about living with MS was when I started to take control of the things I could control. And for me, that was diet and lifestyle. So diet, exercise, meditation, stress, all of those aspects. Since my diagnosis, I've lost 26 kilos. I'm exercising five to six days a week, running eight kilometers, swimming a K and a half in the pool. I started really slowly. I would walk and have a little bit of a run on a treadmill. I was so, so unfit. But I have had a huge transformation. And I quite regularly say that since I've had MS, I've never felt better. And yes, I could potentially relapse in a year's time, whenever, what if I relapse? But I still feel better today. I still feel that I'm healthy. And if I do relapse, my muscles are stronger. I'm fitter, I'll come back from it quicker. So for me, that's control. That is control in a situation where you have, where you feel you've lost it. There's a lot of research going on into diet, lifestyle, exercise and physical activity. We're learning more and more every day. Traditionally, these have been very difficult areas to research because there are so many um, aspects to diet. There are so many different types of um, exercise that you can do. So lifestyle factors we know are um, important in MS. We, we've known for a long time that there's a latitude gradient in MS, so it becomes more common as you get further away from the equator. And we also know that the incidence of MS has been increasing over at least the last 50 years. So that tells us that the risk factors for MS are not just genetic because that time frame is just too short to be genetic. So it means that environmental risk factors are important. And the important thing about that is that you might be able to change those things. You can't change your genetics, but you might be able to change something in your environment to prevent MS. We do know that physical activity and exercise can be really beneficial for MS. It can help to manage some of the symptoms of MS, so things like fatigue, um, balance and falls, for example, can be um, improved through uh, phys different types of physical activity. Cognition is also helped. Um, there's some evidence that um, thinking and memory is helped through uh, physical activity as well. What we don't know yet is what is the best type of exercise, what intensity of exercise you should do, how long you should exercise for. There's no r given rules for people with MS. But what it's, it's really important to do is to find some kind of physical activity, talk to um, uh, a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist, find something that's safe and suitable for you, something that you enjoy because that's something that you're going to stick to um, and then you'll find that it, it can really help with many aspects of um, quality of life and living with MS. The best way for me to take control of my MS is looking at lifestyle changes like diet, exercise and even meditation. I think you really do need to get your act together with food and, uh, and fitness. I, there's too much research that says how tremendously beneficial it can be for you. Again, it doesn't matter what style of diet, but if you're doing the right things and you're feeling good from it, then really stick with it. What I really love about exercise, it allows me to push myself. It also teaches me to listen to my body because every day is different. It also um, builds strength in my limbs, which will hopefully, if um, I do relapse, it'll help me recover easier. Working hard on things like exercise and diet, I just find it makes all the difference for me. It just makes me feel so much better. It makes it easier to cope with um, everything that's going on. It makes the symptoms feel so much better. And also it's something that I can control. I can control what I eat and I control what I can, you know, what I do for exercise. Um, it's, there's not a lot that I can control, but those things that I can control, I really make sure that I work hard on. I do use diet as part of my looking after myself with MS because there's a lot of talk about gut and uh, immune diseases, autoimmune diseases, and I think that that plays a big role. Also, I try and eat healthy as much as possible. I do like having a piece of cake, but I also know that most of the time, what I eat affects my well-being. 
So I do use a few lifestyle factors to help with my MS. I go to Pilates once a week to help with my horse riding and my core strength. I also do stretches every day that uh, my physio has given me to strengthen up my core and my back. That's all just for my horse riding, so my profession that I do every day. And I also have changed my diet and I just feel being as fit and healthy as possible um, just helps the MS and just makes for a better lifestyle day to day. The first thing that I, uh, I um, changed and in my lifestyle was how I ate um, and that's made a huge difference. Um, I feel like it, in some respects it was almost a silver lining because I feel like I'm that much healthier overall now just because of the change in the way that I ate and, and, and what I ate. Yeah, I can't, can't stress uh, enough how much that's made a difference to me overall and, and, the, and the, the byproduct of that is I feel less stressed. Um, I sleep better, meaning I'm less stressed. Um, yeah, it's been a, a fantastic thing, diet change. I definitely use diet to help me with my MS. I do, um, I'm constantly researching how to optimize my body, I guess, um, just to keep it as healthy. It makes rational sense for me. I also find that uh, because of my lifestyle choices and diet, I bounce back from relapses a lot quicker. And I think that is because I'm putting, I'm giving my body the best fighting chance to heal itself. So there's no one diet that is recommended for people with MS. Um, there are some diets um, that are out there that people talk about as being um, part of a, a way of managing MS. What we don't have yet is the evidence that they really do make a difference to someone's um, uh, relapses, to someone's uh, long-term outcomes with MS. A diet that's um, high in vegetables, low in processed foods, low in salt, low in saturated fats, is better for your overall health and better for your brain health. And so finding a diet that works for you, that incorporates all of those aspects, is, is the most appropriate way to go. My approach to, to the way I've uh, responded to a diagnosis of MS is that um, initially, while I was fairly uh, distressed and beaten down like many people, within a very short space of time, I realised I had the skills to actually look at the academic literature in detail, which I did. And to my great surprise, there was a wealth of research already there in 1999 about lifestyle factors in MS. And I made a choice very quickly to adopt the best available lifestyle evidence I could find in that literature search. So essentially, my approach is multi-pronged. I, I use a multimodal lifestyle intervention in myself, which is what I also recommend for other people. So I'm an epidemiologist, not a clinician, so I can't advise you about the sorts of treatments that a clinician would advise you about. But what I do as an epidemiologist is I review the evidence and I look at the, our own research. And what I can say to you as somebody who's newly diagnosed with MS is what we do know is that the best thing to do is to have a healthy diet, get a little bit of sun exposure every day, keep your vitamin D levels up, both for your disease and for your bones, keep active, and if you are a smoker, either cut down or preferably cut out. So there are a number of ways that you can take control of your disease just by living a healthy lifestyle. I see people all the time who are newly diagnosed with MS and first and foremost, I tell them to think positively, that it's, it's really not the terrible thing that they think it is, uh, that we have a fantastic range of treatment options out there for them uh, and that there's much that they can do also to, to help themselves in terms of lifestyle factors as well uh, that they can consider that will help their disease in the long run. So for the newly diagnosed patients, I certainly encourage them uh, that it's, it's critical uh, for the best success for them to be empowered about all of the things that are under their control. The quality of their diet, how they manage stress, uh, their physical activity level. Uh, and I encourage them to address as many of those components as they are willing. Uh, but I also recognize this needs to be linked to their personal uh, mission, their personal values, so they're willing to do the work. Because it's not easy to change one's uh, daily habits, their health behaviors. It's not easy to give up uh, convenient, inexpensive, widely available, and often rather addictive processed foods that have been designed to encourage us to overconsume foods that lack the nutritional needs uh, that our bodies have. One of the things that 
keeps coming up in the community with the research that you do is diet. Uh, there seem to be a lot of pros and cons as to why you should modify your diet. Some people don't believe it, other people do. I do, because of my own personal experience. Again, I'm a disc jockey, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> so I don't know. I can't give you, you know, definitive clinical proof that diets are gonna work for you, but for me, I changed my diet significantly, significantly. Um, whether that's helped with my relapses, because I haven't had one since my initial relapse, because I immediately went on a, a healthy diet, that's worked for me. And I've read a lot of people who've said that diets work for them as well. I also read a lot of people on forums who say that diet doesn't work for them, so it, it's the choice of the individual. Personally, I do follow a specific MS diet and there's lots of different ones out there. And the views between them can be quite polarizing. I honestly, even if I didn't have MS, I would continue to follow the diet that I'm on because I really like the way it makes me feel and the food that's in it. There's loads of misinformation about MS and it can be very confusing. So we want to bust some of the myths that are out there. Myth. Heat and exercise can cause relapses. This myth is understandable, but it is false. Many people with MS experience what's called heat sensitivity, so their symptoms appear worse when their body temperature is elevated. But these symptoms should return to normal once your body temperature cools down. However, it's important to note exercise does have many positive effects. Better overall health and fitness, improved strength, less fatigue and depression, a more positive attitude, and an increased participation in social activities. So we encourage you to find exercise that you like and can do, and do it regularly. I'm a thermoregulatory physiologist, and the area of research that I work in is looking at the way that humans respond uh, to exercise in hot environments. So typically we're 37 degrees Celsius inside the deep part of our body and we have certain physiological mechanisms that we use to try to maintain our body temperature around about the same value. Uh, when we're exposed to hot environments where we've, we're conducting physical activity or exercising, we generate quite a lot of heat and we've got to lose that heat to stop the body rising to dangerous levels of core temperature. The reason that this area of research is important for people with MS is because 90% of Australians living with MS suffer heat-related fatigue. So when they're exposed to a hot environment, they find a temporary worsening of symptoms. It's something called Uthoff's phenomenon. So some things that we need to keep in mind when we're exercising are, of course, the environmental conditions. So the air temperature, which is typically reported on the weather report, is actually in the shade, not directly in, in sunlight and radiant temperature is typically 12 to 15 degrees Celsius higher than air temperature in the shade. For that reason, you want to make sure that you avoid direct sunlight, particularly at the, uh, at the hottest times of the day between noon and four o'clock in the afternoon because this is when the sun is the strongest. Uh, another factor that you need to think about also is making sure that you get as much airflow across the skin because the airflow will help uh, sweat evaporate from the skin surface. And of course, it's the evaporation of, the, of sweat, not the production of sweat, that keeps us cool during exercise when air temperature is above 30 degrees Celsius. So how humid it is, is very, very important to keep in mind as well. So it's well documented that regular physical activity for people with MS is very, very beneficial, particularly in terms of helping prevent and manage other health-related disorders. In terms of how much exercise is enough, uh, according to the Department of Health, people between the age of 18 and 64 years uh, old uh, should be exercising at a moderate activity um, for at least 150 minutes per week. And those guidelines are the same for people with MS as they are for everybody else. When it comes to exercise for people who are sensitive to the heat, a lot of the research has shown that you can use you know, a world of interventions like pre-cooling. Um, but one of the things that we've shown is you can do something as simple as having a cold drink during exercise. And this can increase your exercise tolerance by up to 30%. Um, and specifically, we showed this while people were exercising in a 35 degree Celsius environment. So something as practical as having a cold drink can have quite a large impact for these heat sensitive people. How do I exercise? Um, I ride uh, road bike a couple of times a week, um, either by myself or with a bunch of other uh, miscreant middle-aged uh, men dressed in tight clothes. Um, 
uh, which has its own benefits too because it's uh, it's social. Anyway, so uh, we'll do 20 odd k's, 40 k's, um, hit some hills which I love because um, I'm always first up them. <laughs> <laughs> One time I feel like I'm winning at something physical, um, uh, or a swim, um, uh, generally in summer, but um, um, uh, try and do a kilometre here or there. Um, I live at Bondi, so I'm a bit lucky, so getting in the ocean's um, uh, fabulous, and point to point at Bondi is about a kilometre, so that's, that's like 20 laps in the pool, so it's pretty good. One thing I remember about being diagnosed is stress and reading online that stress could cause relapses. And I remember thinking, how on earth can I manage my stress? I'm so stressed about having MS and having a relapse so that that could create a, a relapse. I mean, that's kind of like a vicious circle. I also worked in a really stressful job and I'm thinking, I'm combining these two things together, what's going to happen? And that was really for me where I came across MS Research Australia. I started to look at the research and started to say, you know, how real is what I'm reading online, the reality and the evidence that's out there? And that to me really helps me decipher what information I want to look at. Uh, the way I deal with stress is through meditation and I learnt, that, learnt those techniques early, early on in the days. Uh, I wasted a lot of time worrying and um, I just, found that things were um, just getting worse. I was worrying about things that might happen or might not happen and um, I just made a decision to learn everything I could about meditation and awareness and that really helps me. When I start to feel stress, I really need to sometimes remove myself from the situation or take deep breaths um, and just remind myself that uh, you know, it's okay that these things are happening to me, but I really need to take care of my body as best as I can. Because of the kind of job that I do, it is stressful. Some days more stressful than others, and stress definitely impacts how the symptoms hit me from MS. Uh, so meditation is very important. And you read there are things that you should do, diet, exercise. Meditation is also one of the main ones. And I do meditation every day, and I try to keep my stress levels down. And I really feel that the stress, any kind of stress, really does have an impact with me, with my MS. One of the ways that I minimise stress in my life is by making sure I'm doing things every day that I love doing. Um, I, I don't, a little bit selfish I guess, I don't do things anymore that I don't love doing. I don't hang around people I don't love hanging around. You know, it's simple things like that. Cognitive behaviour therapy is often called a talking therapy, but it can also be a way of preventing escalation of emotional feelings without it being a therapy. It's based on the idea that just because you think something doesn't mean it's true. So even though you've got privileged access to it in your brain, it doesn't actually mean that it's correct. And we often think in a biased way or an unthinking way about things. So cognitive behaviour therapy is really learning to change your biased thinking about particular things. And what the result of it is, is that it kind of changes the way you actually feel. I think it's particularly um, relevant in a, in a disease like MS because, um, to be quite frank, there's a fair amount of what might be called catastrophizing, and cognitive behaviour therapy is a way for them to actually bring themselves to a point where they're really looking at every thought that they do have and moderating it by the knowledge that they might have, that it really doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up, say, in a wheelchair, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have the best life possible for you. So it's actually a really useful technique, I think. Cognitive behaviour therapy is available now on online programs. Um, the Black Dog Institute has one called My Compass, which is fully automatised. So you just get on, there's no real human behind it, if you like, and you put yourself through a number of exercises. It's been found in scientific trials to actually reduce anxiety and depression. The other one is a program called MindSpot, which also can involve um, talking to somebody via the telephone and then getting onto one of their programs. So it's almost like a blended program. You do some yourself and others, other parts of it you do in conjunction with somebody on the end of the telephone. 
Now, family and, and close friends can support someone who has had a diagnosis with MS by understanding some of the symptoms that they may be experiencing and also to understand that sometimes these symptoms aren't observable um, and providing some potentially instrumental and emotional support during that time. I really have a set of things that I've relied on for, for the last 10 years, like meditation or journaling or going to see family and friends. Um, you know, walking in nature is a huge one for me. So I really try to make sure that I'm including those regularly. But if I am having an extra stressful time, um, I will take all the necessary precautions to calm myself down. Maybe a spa.